reconstructing another boulevard, although uh, it's not for me to have a judgment on it. But what I want to say with this example is that what in terms of infrastructure is a very small amount uh, in terms of creating possibilities for young entrepreneurs is a very big amount. Uh, very last thing, creating the conditions. Uh, lots of things to do, um, lots of points to be made. Um, a group of uh, startuppers has now worked on a Greek startup manifesto. Uh, they were uh, stimulated to do that by Neely Cruz, the commissioner responsible for the digital agenda. Uh, it's about ready. There is a site, greekmanifesto.gr or .eu? .gr. .gr. Uh, where you can sign up to the Startup Manifesto. Um, uh, the, uh, the idea is to collect as many uh, signatures as possible and then present it on the 27th of this month, 27th of June, uh, to the Greek government in the presence of uh, Commissioner Cruz. Uh, that will happen and it contains a number of very valuable points on how you can improve the conditions for startups. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right now, I'd like to ask Mr. Alberto Silvio to have his uh, own statement. I would, I would really love to you know, listen to the take of a big corporation like AT&T on startups and how you are cooperating with them and how do you help them and how startups are helping a big corporation like AT&T. Absolutely. Thanks. So, uh, just to share also what the ambassador said, I mean, I think we also try to have the spokesperson of Commissioner Cruz today with us. But since they are together in Australia doing the tour, that's the reason. Uh, and I think he's very committed to, to work on this, uh, as you know, better than me. So, the first question that comes up probably to your mind is why a company that has 250,000 people is interested in startups or is talking about startups? Um, and I think, I think it's a lot about our philosophy that we have with growth. Uh, if I have to take my example, I'm from Italy, I see uh, this whole issue that we are facing from South Europe, from Greece, uh, Greece, Portugal, uh, Spain, uh, and my country, the youth unemployment is, uh, is very high. It's 50 here, it's 40% in my country, 55% in, in Spain. And I think, you know, what we need in general, but not only in this area, but in all Europe, is how we can restore the, the growth. And why I think startups can be good. I think what we need is technology. And technology nowadays is driving economic growth and is creating a lot of jobs. Um, there are a lot of things that, for example, nowadays we are taking for granted in Europe uh, uh, and in general, globally, I would say. And that's the impact, for example, of technology. Um, you know, the iPhone was just five years ago, so it's the really changed completely the way we are working and and the way uh, the way we are thinking. So, um, how we can approach this? I think, first of all, when we talk about startups, we need to create uh, skills for people that are looking into this market. Uh, when I talk about this, uh, I talk about the fact that, for example, in Europe there are 900,000 IT jobs that are not filled. Uh, so you need to fill these jobs, you need to fill it not only in universities, so you need to push for people to work in maths, in engineering, uh, in high tech. Uh, not only for uh, creating startups, but also for the creator of startups to get this employee working for them. That's fundamental, I think. Uh, the second point that I would like to make is that we need to be disruptive. Uh, we need to stop uh, approaching the, the issue in the old, uh, in the old, uh, uh, in the old system. Uh, and then I'm making a, an example of this. Like tourism here in Greece and also in Italy needs to be approached in a different way, with technology, for example. I have, I'm quite lucky because I have a friend that has just been uh, appointed as head of the National Italian Tourism uh, um, Association and actually uh, he was before uh, vice chairman of the, of the uh, high tech industry in Italy 
and that has been chosen just for this because I think I mean, the really to change the approach, how you formulate your problems and how you formulate the answers, you are giving to this. Um, so, for example, if I if I have to take Europe and, and uh, the fact that we need to be disrupted from 2007 until now, uh, as the ambassador said, I mean there is this buzz, but of course there has been I think a lot of growth. I mean between 2007 and now, incubators have grown by 400 um, percent, and it's not a, a US that uh, it has been uh, done by California. So. Um, what I think AT&T can contribute in this is that we think that it's also our responsibility to drive growth in Europe. Um, we are not so uh, we are not so many in Europe. We are just six thousand people, uh, and what we mainly do is business to business in uh, so serving big multinational. But what we are approaching globally is this idea to be a connector for the young entrepreneurs. So we created this idea of the uh, what we call the AT&T foundry. So it's really like a garage, more or less. It's very high technological, where everybody, everybody, every everybody that has an idea can come there, and we are giving the know-how. Um, it's basically a very fast innovation, just to put product on the market, uh, and. It, it has worked very well. We have more than 30 products places on the market based on young innovators. And if we decide that this is also important for us and we like the idea, we are also going to buy. Uh, we are also going to buy, you know, the company or the idea that they, they are creating. Um, you know, if you think about big multinational, usually, especially for us that we are previous state-owned company, we were. I think we are still perceived like a big elephant, uh, but we like, uh, I would say, work a lot with uh, little gorillas, uh, little uh, monkeys that are the young entrepreneurs. We like to, uh, let's say, get, uh, get help also for them. I mean, usually big multinational, they don't like to get any kind of approach or open their network to everybody. And I think this is what we are doing differently from the others. Uh, the other thing that we are doing is a fast pitch program for uh, entrepreneurs. So, um, if you think about this, it's like a speed, speed dating for uh, young entrepreneurs that they can come to us and we like, uh, we like or not the ideas. It's, uh, it's working very well. Um, the last point that I would like to make, uh, and this touch the, uh, the professor, is I think uh, uh, the way we have to rethink uh, um, new ideas and the regulatory framework in Europe. Um, as she said, I think we are we are facing, you know, uh, a continent that is not a single European market. You need to you to ask yourself why most of the entrepreneurs are, are going to US to sell their products, and the reason is mainly because. They have just one market with 500 people, 500 million people. Here you have to comply to 28 different regulations. You have to, you know, do the, the different regulatory burden. It's a problem. It's a, I mean, it's, it's an issue. It's an issue for a big global company. It can be, I think, much more an issue for a small medium enterprise. Um, on the Silicon Valley, uh, also there, we need to also to remember why the Silicon Valley. Uh, was born, uh, and it was not only born because there were there were great ideas and uh, entrepreneurs that they decided to go there. But I think one of the main points was the political will to create something different. So regulators, the political <coughs> people, especially, and entrepreneurs, they worked together to to work on something that was different. Uh, and you know, the Silicon Valley, I would say, if it's in our memories, but now most of the startups are going to New York. Uh, you know, everything is changing, and the speed of technology is going at much higher speed than sometimes institutions are doing. So I would say this is uh, this is really what we need to think about. Uh, um, and since we are here in the in the in the house of the representation of the European Commission, I think there has been. Apart from commissioner who has uh, been pushing the startup, uh, the startup community also in Greece, 
there has been also um, a plan uh, by DG Industry that uh, that was presented this this year on trying to get uh, much more jobs and growth in Europe through entrepreneurship. This is a just a little thing, but I think it's going to add much more in order, especially to create a transatlantic market for both. I remember um, an article that I, I, I look at the New York Times where they were saying that even people from, uh, from France that they have in mind startups, they are going to London with the idea to go to the US. So coming back to the, to the ambassador, I, I wouldn't say that we need to prevent people leaving to the US, but we need to create a better framework to people to you know, create more jobs and more growth here in, uh, here in Europe. There is a big cultural problem, I think, especially in South Europe regarding the, regarding the fact that you are creating startups, even, you know, families of friends, they are saying, you know, get a serious job, but, uh, you know, but it is a serious job, it is much more serious than any, than any other work in, uh, that you, you can think about. You are creating your own company, you are in charge of everything, and you can provide growth in Europe. So uh, I think the best point is that we, we, need, we, we don't have to, to, to be you know, worried about the fact that we need to communicate that uh, a, a culture of risk failing in Europe, because this is just to create uh, growth in our, in our continent. And thanks. <laughs>
this is a, a huge problem that takes a lot of time and effort from the founding team that needs to be focused on a product and how to make this product as best as possible. So, uh, as far as funding is concerned, uh, I'm really optimistic in that, uh, in that front because right now, due to generic funding, due to angel investors, at least in Greece, I guess in Europe as well, uh, I believe that having a great product or a great company that's at the beginning, uh, you won't have a problem getting funded uh, from venture capital firms or from angel investors. That's not a problem. What is a problem is that right now, uh, due to the volatile political and economical uh, state of Greece, I don't know if you can attract foreign investors if you have a Greek company. Um, I think I've heard from other startups that in order to get uh, foreign funding, you have to have a company in the UK or in Ireland with a more uh, more uh, tested uh, company entities. Um, so last but not least, uh, what I want to say because uh, when we started the company, I was still in the university. Uh, a huge issue that needs to be addressed is education and entrepreneurship. Um, I, I, I started at the National Technical University of Athens, which has all the engineering schools in Athens. And the amount of startups coming out of the university is tragic. It's like one startup per year. Uh, that's really sad. We have so much untapped potential in these schools. Uh, and we, uh, we believe that academia is far from entrepreneurship. Uh, we, uh, we started an initiative, a student initiative, when I was at school, that uh, we wanted to, to start talking about entrepreneurship uh, within the, the, the university. And we, we reached out to professors, and they were willing to help us. And we reached out to the Hellenic Management Association, and they were also willing to help us. So it's not a problem of willingness. It's a problem of we have to have a, a mechanism, some, some actions in order to bring and bridge the industry with the university. Uh, I believe that that's a general European problem because in Europe, as I've heard, uh, failure is being stigmatized rather than embraced. And that's a huge difference uh, between Europe and the US. So I think uh, if, we, if we teach children, even at schools, if we, if we start uh, inserting the, the, the whole idea of entrepreneurship and what entrepreneurship really is, it's not owning a coffee shop or a bar, which 50% of all the small and medium companies in Greece are. Uh, and especially teaching kids that, kids and students mostly at the universities, that entrepreneurship is not for old people and grown ups, that they have an advantage, especially in the technology sector that they are capable of bringing change and creating great products that can, can, can go global. I mean, yeah, we, we should stop thinking as small. So that's all I had to say. Uh, thank you very much for my point of view. Thank you very much, John. Um, I would like to open the floor to, to the audience, maybe. Sorry. I would like just to ask a very small question. Yes, sir. What about this business of the Greek government and other governments supporting certain fields of economic activity? You always read that Greece has A, B, C, and D comparative advantages, and that money is going to be thrown into these fields where they think we have a comparative advantage. Do you believe this is the right attitude, or should we let all flowers flourish without preconditioning what are the fields that are appropriate for development? Um, there is something to be said for, for sectoral policies, but I think we should be also very modest uh, as governments in what you can accomplish by uh, the economic structure uh, programs. Uh, uh, I don't think there are many examples of governments really being successful in uh, directly uh, influencing the structure of their economy. It's much more about shaping the right conditions. Uh, and I'm, I'm not an extreme liberal, but it, it is about shaping... Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Not That's because we had this, this discussion right before this. Uh, uh, I, 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 I followed that. But this, the, um, the, the big challenge is to create the right investment and business 
uh, climate. And then there is a number of measures that are specifically interesting for, for startups. Uh, on top of that, you can have uh, a number of government policies that are basically aimed at connecting uh, the dots, uh, connecting uh, academia uh, with the community of young entrepreneurs, connecting the community of young entrepreneurs with big businesses, connecting that cluster with uh, regional uh, government, which is also very important. There's a number of very interesting examples uh, that I, I know just because I, I, I come from that country in Delft and in Eindhoven. Uh, yeah, they've been very act active in, in, in connecting uh, these four actors, three to four actors, uh, with a long-term strategy. Uh, and it's basically about bringing people together, uh, putting them in the same room and make sure that they understand each other. Uh, and uh, I think that's much more worthwhile than saying we think as a government that uh, this and that sector is is the key sector for our economies for the com for the coming five years. So we, we we haven't been very good at predicting that and by in influencing that. I'll just come in for a second. Um, uh, well, I would like to start by saying that uh, sectoral policy in the old sense is dead and buried and is not going to be resurrected in the future, in, at least in the near future. Um, there have been successes in different, under different conditions, not in Greece. There have also been terrible abuses and uh, preferential treatment of uh, specific entrepreneurs in the name of prioritizing sectors. Now it seems that the general ambience is more in, in the direction of horizontal um, measures. That is, um, addressing issues uh, facing firms of different uh, categories, but which act as uh, preconditions for a smooth operation for success. So, um, as much as I feel disappointed by uh, looking at the sectoral characteristics of new firms in Greece, because it is uh, it's a naked, naked eye evidence that you get. Um, lots of manicure, pedicure, and frozen yogurt. <laughs> and these two are useful and interesting, but cannot um, uh, tell the whole story of our present and our future. I don't think you can um, um, direct uh, the, uh, the entrepreneurial um, activity into pre-decided uh, you know, activities. But you have to do the long job, which is to start and um, cultivate entrepreneurial values from very small, from, from very young ages. By the time students become students, 18, um, they are at best good Xerox machines. Uh, with no capacity to decide which part of the page to Xerox. So sometimes they, they give um, a consecutive number of pages because they're not sure if the answer is in line 4 or line 44 or next page. Now, this is the most anti-entrepreneurial anti uh, attitude. I don't want to be you know, very negative, but the kind of... Um, um, environment that we offer to people of all ages uh, in order to deal with the problems of their everyday lives is totally inadequate. It's not only insufficient, it is wrong. It goes in the wrong direction. This is what I meant by sleepwalking into the depth of the forest while dreaming that we're out in the out of the woods. This this is the kind of misunderstanding that I think still is very much on. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Yes, I'll work on this. Uh, I just wanted to comment on uh, on the fact that you know when I meant disrupting, this is exactly the point I was talking about. I think 
you know, the sectors are not anymore uh, complying to anything anywhere. I, I was in a conference speaking in Italy about the reforming Europe. So uh, they started to put panels on different sectors of the economy. And uh, it was interesting because at, at the beginning of the panel, there was the first panel on transport and, you know, roadways, uh, ports, material stuff that you see. You know, and they still think, you know, um, industry is something that you can touch with your hand. Uh, so that, the, the, for example, the digital economy panel was the last. There were three panels. And uh, at the end I explained, you know, ports, it's incredible because now it's everything you can manage but with your iPhone. You're not moving trucks with, uh, you know, uh, with 40 people. It's technology based. So that's the thing. Second thing is competition is good. Is driving growth and jobs, and is changing in better the market. Um, and the third thing, uh, we need to be, I think, very careful also on sector to put flags on, um, let's say, country sectors. Like Italy is good in automotive, or Greece is, is good in, I don't know, transport. We don't have to think about this anymore. We need really to go a little bit further.